Alright, this is with Mark Cohen on April 12, 2016. Okay, so, could you uh, please start by just talking about your personal history growing up as a child, like where you grew up as a child, and also, but before that, start off with your parents' history, like about, talk about your parents and then yourself, about your childhood. Sure. So, um, uh, my mom and dad uh, were both only children. Uh, my dad, my mom was adopted uh, out of New York. Uh, my dad uh, was born in uh, Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, my mom grew up in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Uh, they, my dad was a shoe salesman uh, for most of his life. My mom was an administrative assistant. Uh, they met very young uh, in New Jersey, in New York, uh, married, and um, had three children. Both are Jewish. Um, but were raised relatively um, were raised relatively uh, liberally, um, not very observantly. Um, I was born uh, in September of 1960. Uh, I'm 55 years old. I'm their first child. I have a brother and a sister. Uh, my brother is 18 months younger. My sister is uh, six years younger. Both uh, all of my family currently lives in New Jersey. My dad was born in 1936. Uh, my mom was born in 1938 and passed two years ago. Um, I uh, grew up in mostly African-American and Italian communities, not very uh, strongly Jewish communities, um, and uh, went to public high school. Eventually, I went to college at Moravian College in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, I have my bachelor's degree in sociology. I then came to Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, Illinois, where I got my Master's of Fine Arts in Opera and Acting with a minor in Lighting Design. Um, I graduated from uh, Nutley High School in New Jersey in 1978, from Moravian College in 1982, and from uh, Northern Illinois University in 1985. Uh, throughout most of my career, I was involved in uh, theater and the arts. Um, I pursued theater and art and opera professionally for a number of years. I traveled around the United States singing opera in cities like San Francisco and Dallas and Louisville and Chicago. Um, my last year professionally in the arts, I was living in Anchorage, Alaska, um, working for the Alaska Rep and the Alaska Light Opera Company. Uh, I met a young woman from Shorewood, Wisconsin. I had not yet worked or knew anything about Wisconsin. Um, who we, we were involved. She uh, brought me back here to Wisconsin, where I worked professionally at Skylight, uh, Florentine, the Milwaukee Opera Company, the Milwaukee Rep, uh, for a couple of years. Uh, she subsequently left. I stayed um, and uh, eventually met my wife, um, Wendy, uh, we were married in 1992. Uh, don't tell her I don't remember exactly. Um, we've been married about 23 years. And um, she grew up here in Milwaukee on the west side of town. Um, we have two children. My daughter Carly is a sophomore in the business school in Madison. My son Zachary is a freshman at Nicolay High School. Uh, we live in Glendale, Wisconsin, at the same home we purchased when we got married uh, uh, on Bender Road, 1111 West Bender Road, Glendale, Wisconsin. Um, professionally, after I left theater, I worked um, for, uh, I worked for, um, I worked for, um, uh, Manpower Corporate Headquarters as a, as, an, as a trainer in accounting and then uh, got a position as the executive director at Congregation Shalom in Fox Point, where I worked as the director for about 20 years. Um, I left there um, and uh, worked as the foundation director for Wheaton Franciscan Healthcare. Uh, then I worked as a relationship manager for PNC and Wealth Management, and now I'm currently the interim director for Hillel, Milwaukee, and the UWM campus, uh, period. My first location, uh, the first place I lived in Milwaukee when I got here approximately 30 years ago was um, a fourth-floor walk-up apartment on 
Juno and Lion. Lion and Van Buren. Lion and Van Buren. Um, then moved uh, with Wendy uh, to an apartment um, on 82nd and Center Street in Milwaukee. And then from was that, there... Was that the same year? No. Um, okay. I probably lived in that first apartment for... I think we lived there a year together or two, perhaps a year. And then we moved into an apartment on uh, 82nd and Center. I uh, lived there for a year as well. And then we um, got married and bought a home uh, at uh, in on Bender Road in Glendale. Okay. Um, so... You previously mentioned that before um, you moved here to Wisconsin um, to your apartment at eight, um, Lion and Van Buren, mm-hmm. you didn't really know anything about uh, Milwaukee or the ex- in, um, and certainly nothing about the Glendale and ba- um, Whitefish Bay area where Bayshore Mall is. No, not at all. Um, the only time I came, I came to Wisconsin once um, from grad school, from DeKalb, with my roommate at the time, who um, brought me somewhere. I was so I had no idea where I really was to a downtown. It was a downtown, but no, I knew nothing about um, Bayshore Mall or Glendale. Uh, I had, uh, while living in those other two locations, had an occasion to go to the movies, the movie theater on 76th and Good Hope Road um, and uh, exited the Good Hope Road exit off of I-43 and so passed by Glendale but took no notice of Bayshore until I moved into the community. Okay. Um, So what has been your experience from going from not having any real knowledge of the site, um, how important it was, with the previous uh, old mall that used to be there until the early 2000s. What, what was that experience from living so close to um, the former mall and then what um, some people have informed me wasn't as popular as a shopping center as some of the other malls in the Milwaukee area as to what the mall is today? Like, how has, that, how has the change in development in that area affected... Uh, your usage of that of that area. Sure, great question. So, um, actually, I'm a big bike rider, and as my whole family. And so, when my kids were young, um, we would actually ride to the old strip mall. It was an outdoor strip mall. It had a it had a it had a restaurant. A uh, kind of a boy, I don't remember. It was like a southwestern themed restaurant. It had our bank was in there. It had a Walgreens. Um, and uh, we'd often go for a bike to eat. Uh, we'd stop and drive our bikes to the Walgreens. Uh, there was a Kohl's grocery store, sort of not attached to it at all, but sort of in front of the mall, right on Port Washington Road. Just a, um... a standalone grocery store, an old Kohl's sort of semi uh, arched uh, roof. Old Kohl's grocery store. Um, There was a Kohl's as well in the back of that sort of frontage strip mall that was not attached either. It was a separate kind of big open parking lot. Um, And so we'd go there only because it was uh, functional. We went to Sears an awful lot for as we were modeling our home and, you know, moved in. Um, It was functional. It was it was okay. uh, now the mall is is certainly um, magnificent and a destination. Uh, we find ourselves shopping there three or four times a week. Different reasons that we'll go there. Um, uh, sometimes it's I'll have a meeting, a coffee meeting with someone. Uh, oftentimes it's stopping at Trader Joe's to pick something up. Uh, my sons and daughters, orthodontist, is in there. Um, uh, we'll go to any of the number of uh, restaurants for eating uh, during the during the summer. We'll often go to programs uh, in the center where the fountain is. They'll do musical programs or comedy programs, and we'll sort of go and and watch, enjoy those. Uh, they have the chalk festival. They do the art an art festival right on the street. That's really a lot of fun. So and because we ride our bikes a lot, I'm often through there all the time, just drive, using it as an access to 
uh, sort of stay off the main thoroughfares but get into Whitefish Bay further down on Silver Spring. Um, yeah, that's is there more that I didn't answer or something more you'd like to know? Um, also, so I see how it's um, the development of the new mall has culturally influenced it. Uh, just influence how you live there in that neighborhood. I'm just curious, um, have you seen any effect, or do you feel any effect on, say, the traffic or the infrastructure um, because of the mall's location and the proximity proximity to where you live, such as traffic throughout, like, um, popular shopping times of the year, especially right before the holiday season, or... Um, one thing that I've noticed when I go to the site is that, for some reason, some of the roads, in particular Port Washington Road and um, part of Silver Spring, right by the mall, the, the, the condition of the road is much better than some, of the other, than some of the other major streets in Milwaukee. So how do you feel that is? Like, why do you think that is? Um, why the roads are so nice? And, like, how does it, how does it affect your uh, travel not only to the site, but just getting around in your day-to-day -day life. Sure. Well, um, I live, as I shared with you, I lived less than a half a mile away from Bayshore Mall. Um, so, um, I, um, although I know the mall uh, renovation and remodeling was very controversial with the residents of Whitefish Bay because it abuts uh, to their the western edge of Whitefish Bay, uh, is against the back end of Bayshore Mall. Um, and uh, so, a number of very specific things. One is the roads are very good around there. Obviously, uh, one of the positive effects of it was uh, a, an improvement of the infrastructure. There are now three additional exits to Silver Spring Road, which I think were well, relatively well done to alleviate traffic, um, sort of mall... Uh, Tra mall traffic. Um, during the holiday period around the, the Christmas and New Year's holiday, um, it, it's, it's very bad. Um, I, we, being Jewish, we get to avoid it pretty much. <laughs> uh, we make a point of avoiding it. Um, I, think, um, I think some of the decisions that were made in order to manage traffic flow, um, you know, are, are challenging. For example, heading east on Silver Spring from Port Washington Road to the first stoplight, which would be the entrance into Bayshore near uh, the Coles, um, or the back of the parking structure, um, is, a, is a challenge when it gets busy to turn, um, and it blocks uh, sort of the continuing traffic west onto Silver Spring, uh, east onto on Silver Spring. Um, I know for me that uh, a number of people take advantage of making U-turns while heading north on Port Washington Road in front of Bayshore Mall despite the no U-turn signs. There's not enough turn turnaround, sort of turnaround space uh, for them to do that uh, without blocking traffic. Um, so that's often a challenge. Um, but I would say uh, I would say too that there are limited, uh, despite the parking structures, and I know they they put a number of them in there. There are limited, easy access parking spaces, uh, in particular around the the front of the mall, the Trader's Joe section, um, uh, where um, where the bank is located on the northern edge of the mall. That's that's frontage of Port Washington Road. Um, near the um, near the uh, uh, cheesecake factory um, and the sports authority, there's very limited parking there. Um, I know with the closing of um, Sears, that has helped because there's no actual parking uh, uh, competition for getting to the Sears. Uh, but I know that space is also, uh, you know, has got some plans for it. So. I, I think overall parking parking is um, generally a challenge, but things tend to, by the Verizon store and it tends to move relatively well um, at the heavier times on a Saturday. Um, it tends to be a challenge. Um, however, we're far enough away um, that um, we have both a, a you know a benefit and a deficit. One is that we 
have the benefit of the significant um, tax uh, tax um, uh, addition to their tax rolls by Bayshore Mall and all of its tenants, um, which helps to leave, for me as a property owner, taxes are, are reasonable um, because of the good uh, corporate tax base um, and commercial tax base. Um, uh, the roads around, uh, beyond Bayshore Mall to the north on Portion Road are um, getting in worse shape and certainly need to be redone. Um, Bender Road was recently redone, which is nice. Um, Port Washington, Silver Spring, um, I think once you get further out north and south on Port Washington Road, there's some opportunity for repair and improvement. Um, and the deficit is that we, um, you know, we... The tax base is helpful. The the um, access and, and egress from the freeway system is is positive, um, but there is um, increased traffic up and down Bender Road uh, because that's the only major thoroughfare between Good Hope and Silver Spring that goes from Port Washington to Green Bay Road. Oh. I hope you can sort of sense yeah. that out. So there's a lot there's a lot of traffic there. Okay, um, a few minutes uh, earlier on, we discussed about your that um, before you actually moved to Milwaukee, that you didn't really know anything about the site, and you like, do you remember anything when you first moved to Milwaukee in um, nineteen eighty five? Do you re do you have any recollection of about the Bayshore Mall area? Like, do you remember any of the stores there, or what? Like, what was that site like? Sure, um, I. The things, a couple things that stand out are the cemetery, which is there, which is um, odd and interesting that it's between, and it's, it's like a commercial properties and strip malls and restaurants have grown up around this little cemetery that's kind of stuck in the middle of it. Um, there was a Goodyear, Goodrich, Goodyear tire store um, that was just north of the Sears, uh, which abutted the the cemetery, uh, which has subsequently been demolished, and that property remains sort of undeveloped. Um, it's a sort of a dumping ground for snow. It's the place where they use for selling Christmas trees. Um, it's just kind of an eyesore, quite honestly. Um, um, what's also a unique feature is right behind Bayshore Mall, heading north on Lydell, just north of the mall, there's a one-way street. Um, the, the road narrows right behind the cemetery, and Lydell becomes this unusual one-way uh, for, for about two or three hundred yards. Uh, um, I'm showing Mark a map right now that I have for reference. Is, yeah. the, is this the road that, you, that you're talking about? Um, it's the, the nor northern edge of the site? Um, it, it actually... So, I, d I don't know where, if this is Lydell... Um, yes, that is Lydell. So, yeah, it, it would be... Where's the cemetery? The cemetery is here. Yeah, so it would um, be... In this general zone. Yeah, it would be right in here. There's this unusual okay. little one-way just heading north for about two or three hundred yards. Um, that's a unique feature. Um, there, Like I said, there was a Walgreens. There was a southwestern kind of restaurant. Um... It really didn't seem to me to be a destination for anything other than to perhaps go grocery shop shopping because the Kohl's grocery store was a, a popular place. The Kohl's, um, the Kohl's clothing store, which was, again, a freestanding structure uh, pretty far east on the property, was also a popular destination. Uh, the Walgreens, beyond that, I don't remember much anything else in the mall. And you don't have any prior um, knowledge of well when you initially moved to the to um, Baker Street at, is it Bender sorry, Bender Street in in 1992 you didn't have any previous knowledge of what the, what used to be on the site before or um, or in 1985 you didn't know anything about the history no I didn't um, I've subsequently in, since living there. Um, uh, talked to a number of neighbors, and that it was um, a farm area. And certain parts of it were farm area. Um, there's even back on uh, Sunny Point, 
there's still a very large greenhouse, and there was the Callis Honey Farm, uh, where honey was produced, um, right on right around the corner from me, right on Sunny Point. Um, uh, I know that there were some of the homes that are on Bender and Sunny Point were sort of farmsteads, um, but beyond that, um, no idea. Um, you did mention that you that your neighbors have mentioned that there used to be farms in that area, but as part of the research that we've conducted for this project, and anyone listening to this recording can see on the website, that actually, um, as of 1929, most of the site um, of Bayshore Mall was actually individual plots of land with only one minor subdivision um, on 4th Street, which I believe that entrance is still there, but otherwise it was subdivided into mainly just different plots of land for hmm. uh, farm usage, ex with the exception of a few commercial businesses, um, mainly a tire and uh, tire repair and auto garage store on the corner, the exact corner of Silver Spring and Port Washington Road, hmm. and um, we're currently where the, closer to the sports authority, um, there was the main office of a strip mine operation that mine that uh, excavated sand and gravel for to be used in the production of concrete mix that was owned and used by a local contracting company here in Milwaukee for about 50 years. Um, hmm. The site of the excavation actually went from about where the sports authority currently exists all the way down to where the open pavilion by the Sprecher restaurant is really um and and if you go to the site today of course you would never 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 would have couldn't uh, imagine it exactly um and then also there are a few additional maps here um this one shows the current buildings but also um i have the previous i have, i've illustrated the previous plots of lands and the names of the owners from the 1954 mm. Milwaukee City Atlas. Um, wow. Like, how do you, does this surprise you at all? That, um, just how diverse the history of the site of this, the history of this site was? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, because, you know, we only tend to have a, a history of things within our own lifetime or just beyond. And so, but, I, I love history, and so when you think about how it probably was used, um, it's not unreasonable to imagine that there were uh, farms um, on these areas. It's interesting to see, um, you know, some of the names of the families that owned these farms and 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 plots of land, and see, uh, you know, if there are any names that were are familiar. Uh, they aren't, but they're certainly interesting. Um, I would have expected. Perhaps more of these names to be street names in Glendale, right after families, but uh, but not. But I'm not terribly surprised to find out that they were farms. Also, with um, this earlier map from uh, 1929 that we found, yeah. Um, if the 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 separate the additional sheet that goes just north of it, it does show that um, the cemetery was there. Huh. Um, but the reason why the cemetery is there, but it just seems so out of place because from the research that we've done and records we found is that at a time, this was the most northern suburb of Milwaukee. Um, wow. and so they decided, they thought that it wouldn't grow that much so that they would be, it'd be uh. okay to have a, one individual, uh, site for the cemetery, and then adjacent to it would be um, an additional, um, like, reserve site in case the cemetery would be needed to, would to expand, but obviously it hasn't since that site is now, um, the adjacent cemetery space, uh, the backup, so to say, is actually um, the site of what, where the Sears used to be. Well, the building still exists, but the that Sears is now out of business. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. That was going to be a backup. Yeah. I mean, sort of an expansion for the yeah. cemetery. It's a uh, right here. It just says uh, it's a I spare, see. essentially a spare lot. But got it. Um, yeah, that certainly sits in a. You can see then why we thought if that was the northern end of the where as far as 
populations would grow, that it would be safe to set it on the outskirts of town. Uh, but of course, the reality is now it's been subsumed, <laughs> you know, and overgrown by commercial properties. Yes. Um, so, like, just being shown this information about from of the history of the site, and then from your prior knowledge, what, like, do you think this this tells a story? If this, I'm sorry, if this research could tell a story, what do you think that story would be? I think it would show. Um, you know, sort of the normal growth of a community uh, from the 20s and 30s, uh, sort of farm communities, uh, through the 1940s and 50s, post-World War II boom. Obviously, that's when the Coles and those other stores were, um, were initially built. And then um, a desire to, I think, um, actively manage development in a... In a thoughtful and intentional way that would generate um, income for the for the city of Glendale it would um, it would provide resources and a, and a town center I know that was their intention for uh, for the community sort of a place to go because there isn't really a, a, a kind of a hearkening back to an older time when there was the center of town and everybody went to the square. Um, I know they're doing that currently in Oak Creek at Drexel, Drexel's uh, Town Square. Um, so I, I think they've, I think they've done a nice job of leaving lots of green space. Um, quite honestly, um, we have magnificent parks. I live right near Kletch Park and the waterfall, the Milwaukee River. Um, I think they've done a reasonably decent job of finding balance. Pardon me. Between green space and development. Um, Kletch Park and Clody Park and Doctors Park. I mean, there are, there's a wonderful park system um, in the North Shore and throughout Milwaukee, um, which I think helps to balance the, the need and the desire to, to um, develop and grow. Okay. Um, well, thank you, very, thank you very, again. Thank you again very much for this. You're welcome.